Hello and welcome to Too Far Tech. Today you will see the disassembly of the Galax GeForce GTX 960 2GB graphics card. In this video you will learn how to pull apart the graphics card and put it back together. During this process I will also show you how to deep clean the graphics card. Remember to put back the card you will need the thermal paste or the thermal compound so don't attempt this unless you have thermal compound handy also let me add a disclaimer i do not suggest or recommend you do this by yourself if you decide to follow my instruction and end up breaking or failing to fix your graphics card properly i can't be held responsible so get a professional to do this for you if you are not sure about the process now the pictures you have seen so far shows the condition of this graphics card and before I get started let me request you to subscribe. To fully disassemble the graphics card means you need to remove the PCIe front panel for that. You need to remove two hexagonal screws installed in the DVI port area as shown in the picture. Also the two screws linking the plate to the graphics card board as shown in the video. So let's get going. You will need a star or a Phillips type screwdriver and a 5 size hexagonal bolt remover. You could also use a pliers to remove the hex screw but I don't recommend that because it could get really messy. On my table you can see an assortment of brushes that I use for different activities. I do not suggest that you need to have all these brushes but these brushes have different purposes. They come with different bristle lengths and strengths. As you can see, the plate hides the dust. On the back side of the board, you will find six screws, but for now, you only need to remove four screws to remove the big heatsink from the GPU board or the die. So, removing these screws will dismantle the heatsink. Once again, remember. To put back you will need thermal compound so don't remove this if you don't have any thermal compound or thermal paste make sure you have some kind of tray to hold the screws i typically use an ice cube maker to hold different screws in different compartments so i don't get confused don't pull apart the back panel or yank it hard as it has a cooler fan connected to the board take your time and pry off the connector from the board Inspect the heatsink carefully as you need to remove the thermal compound from the heatsink. The heatsink is also really dirty. I also use ethyl alcohol and lint free tissue. We will now proceed to remove the heatsinks from the MOSFET. For that we will need to access the back side of the board and remove two additional Phillips type screws. Depending on the condition of the card, you might require a flat blade screwdriver to pry open the heatsink. This is a very delicate process due to two reasons. Slowly remove the thermal pad and I hope in your case it hasn't dried up completely. If it has dried up, then you are going to need another thermal pad to ensure proper thermal conductivity and success of this activity. If you manage to remove it like the way I did, keep it away for some activities later. Now let's remove the metal shroud which is held by the four tiny screws. I will not be showing how I remove the dirt from the heatsink in this video. Typically, I would blow the dust with a blower then brush the dust off with a long bristle brush like the ones you can see on the table. Actually wash it using pressure water and cleaning solution. So I typically use something like a dishwasher to actually clean the heatsink. This activity is beyond the scope of this video as I'm worried that youngsters might be really tempted to follow my activities and end up damaging their card or even the PC itself. Be careful not to scratch or break any components on the board. As you can see, I'm struggling a bit with different screwdrivers to get it off and it requires cleaning too. The last part to be removed is the fan and it's held together by three screws per fan as I explained before. 
without a magnetic screwdriver you're going to have a hard time putting those screws back so let's get started with the cleaning process first i will lightly brush all the components to remove the dust particles same process can be applied to the heat sink too Next I will use a brush with medium hard bristles to remove the thermal paste. And a brush with long bristles to reach the areas that can't be reached by the shorter bristles. After that, I apply the medium bristles to the board to remove the dust particles. In the video, I used the same brush as the one used for thermal paste because the thermal paste was hard and it chipped off easily without getting stuck onto the brush. But if the thermal paste was still in the viscous form, you shouldn't use the same brush elsewhere as it will spread and smear the thermal paste all over the board making your life really difficult. The card couldn't be cleaned by simple brushing as you can see and the dust has attached itself really strong to the board. So I'm going to follow a cleaning process that I invented myself. For that I'm going to use Edel alcohol brush and lint free tissue. I apply the alcohol multiple times on the board using a clean brush. Let it soak. After that, I apply the tissue on the board and brush it over again. In this way, the bristles of the brush would actually push the tissue all over the board and the tissue would actually suck up the dust and the grime at the same time. The tissue acts as a pickup medium to remove the dislodged residue. It's an effective method and I've been using this method for the past few years on hundreds of graphics cards. As each stage is completed, I use a cleaning brush to ensure I'm not reapplying the dust from the last, last cleaning stage. So the brush is clean. The memory chip on the rear requires special attention at the, as the dirt and liquid can hide below the chip. You can see that I'm trying to let the brush reach to the rear side of the memory to swipe of any dirt that might be hiding over there. The same process is also applied to the front side of the board. However, it must be done with more patience and courage. I'm moving fast due to my experience, but a wrong hit on the capacitors could actually dislodge them. Or if the board is weaker, or if the bristles are too hard, and they can manage to dislodge any components, and then you would have a dead graphics card. Now this level of cleaning is not really necessary to get the best performance from this card but I am obsessive compulsive about my card being spotlessly clean and perfect. So that's why I call it the deep clean process. 
I do the same tissue trick to remove the dirt and grime from the top of the cards and I'm very familiar with the components so I know where to put the pressure and where to ease it off. And remember, the memory and the chips die will store the dirt and alcohol under them. So special attention must be made to that area. You can already see the difference on the board. It looks almost new. Next, let me start with the heatsink shroud. In this case, the shroud design is simple and so easy to clean it. Some brands make the shroud that has complicated designs and details which makes it cleaning almost impossible. Again, cl cleaning this shroud doesn't really affect the performance. Yes, it's a metal panel and letting it be clean helps to dissipate the heat much faster. Some final love with alcohol and we are done with this part. Now we move on to the fans. First some touch with the standard paintbrush, then we move on to the medium bristles. I like my fan to be clean and I know within a week of operation this is gonna be the same as before. In the case of fan, I just use some wet wipes to finish them off and give them that brand new look. Now be patient with the fans as you don't want to break them fins. Clean the cable and the connectors too. Before we get to the final part, let me show you a trick that I performed to clean the thermal pads on any graphics card. For that you need a tape like the one I placed on the table and need to take the small heat sink from the MOSFET area and place it flat on the table as shown. Remove a small part of the tape, slightly bigger than the thermal pad and apply on top of it as you can see in the video. Then remove the tape as I'm showing in the video. Depending on the amount of dirt picked up, you could use another clean tape and repeat the process. You can give special attention to the areas that have dirt that didn't come off the first time. Once you are done cleaning, remove the thermal pad and clean the heatsink with the brush. After cleaning with brush, proceed to put the thermal pad on the heatsink and put the whole thing away for later use. Now the last major part is the heatsink itself. Typically cleaning a simple aluminum single piece heatsink is easy. However, the heat pipe designs must be handled carefully. If you drop them or hit them hard, they will lose their shape and effectiveness. You can skip this step as this is one of my standard activities. The copper plate touching the GPU die looks oxidized. I'm going to use a 400 grit sandpaper to do a light sanding or lapping before we put it back together. Make sure if you are following this that you clean this thoroughly before proceeding as you don't want any metal filings to fall onto the board. Now it's time to wrap up. Clean the components one last time and use the heat gun to remove any possible liquid residue. First we mount the MOSFET heatsink and the thermal pad with two screws. Then we mount the fan onto the heatsink. You might want to check the orientation of the fan and the heatsink in advance before you put them on.
let's connect the fan to the graphics card main board so i preheat the heatsink and gpu die before i apply the thermal compound this is my style i don't recommend you do that unless you know what you're doing Now it's time to seal them up with the four spring-loaded screws. Next, we install the PCIe play with two screws on the board and the two hex screws on the DVI port. Finally, it's time to put back the shroud with the four tiny screws. So now you have the card completed and ready to be inserted to your motherboard to have a final check. So what do you all think? How does it look before and after? We have performed this process in multiple cards from the same brand and model. I have managed to reduce the temperature on the card and improve the overall overclocking capability. Anyways, I hope you all liked and enjoyed this video. So subscribe and hit that notification bell because we have more stuff coming up soon and something that you haven't seen before. So thank you for watching and you all have a wonderful day.